Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with SRLounge.com. All right guys, it's time to move on to vintage color cross processing. And to do that, we have selected Exercise File 2-11, which is our lovely car here. I'm gonna take it into the Develop module by hitting D. And this car isn't so lovely. Hopefully none of you guys are driving this car around or attempting to, because I don't think that'd work out so well for you. But uh, let's make sure that we have Snapshot 01 color corrected selected. If you don't have this, it's probably because you've been a bad kid and you have skipped our color correction on this on this image. So make sure you go back and do that in that previous chapter. Now we're gonna start from this point and we're gonna do something that's called digital cross-processing. I wanna explain a little bit that digital cross-processing is very much different from cross-processing and where that term originally came from. Cross-processing is basically a process that used to be done on film where a photographer would shoot something and say a certain type of film and rather than processing it in the type of uh, you know chemicals that should have been used for that film, they use a different chemical that was designed for a different type of film, hence the term cross-processing. Now what that process does is it creates all sorts of crazy wacky colors. It can add greens to the highlights and blues to the shadows and boost overall reds. It can make skin tone look like you know your Oompa Loompas and all orange and stuff. It kind of just had this wacky kind of crazy look to the images. And uh, oftentimes it actually came out looking like you know a vintage photograph where you know you have amplified colors in certain areas and stuff. And that's why I think today people kind of confuse cross-processing with vintage photographs is because it kind of simulates that effect to an extent. Now, some cross-processing looks crazy wacky and it just looks like, you know, a toy effect. But uh, there are styles of cross-processing that can make images look like vintage tone images where you have, you know, amplified blues in the shadows and, you know, more greens in the highlights and boosted reds in the highlights and stuff like that. And that's really the effect that we're going to be creating with digital cross-processing. We're going to be going into our tone curve and then in different the color channels to create that effect. So cross-processing digitally and on film are two different things. We can kind of use digital cross-processing to simulate some of the effects that you get with film cross-processing though. All right, let's get started. That's enough jibber jabber. Let's load up our tone curve palette by hitting control two. Uh, or panel rather. I'm gonna keep calling these things palettes. I'm so used to Photoshop. All right, so with the tone curve selected, what we're gonna do is go down to RGB if it's not already selected. You're gonna make sure the point curve is reset to linear and make sure that you have this editing point curve selected. If it's not selected, we don't have full control over this point curve. We're adjusting with these regions thing here, which is like I said before, it's something I never do. If I wanna adjust my tone curve, I adjust it manually. If I don't, I use my basic sliders. There's no point in using these sliders down here to adjust your tone curve when you have the exact same thing up in the basic module or basic panel. So let's click to edit our point curve. Now we have the option in Lightroom 4, which is something that we didn't previously have, and this kind of makes it worth buying Lightroom 4 just in and of itself. We have the option to click and choose a different channel that we want to edit. So we can edit just the reds, the greens, or the blues, or all channels together. So let's start with our cross-processing, and this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna boost up our reds so that we have more reds in the highlights, and we're gonna pull it down in the shadows. All right, now we're gonna boost up our greens the exact same way. So we're gonna boost it up in the highlights and then we're gonna pull it down in the shadows again. Then we're gonna do the exact opposite with our blues. We're gonna pull it down in the highlights and then pull it up in the shadows. And this has this effect of kind of creating this vintage Tony look where we have, you know, more greens in the highlights, more blues and shadows, you know, reds and greens overall in the highlights have been boosted, but otherwise they've been pulled out and it kind of has a really cool look to it. Now what we're gonna do is switch back to our RGB panel or the RGB selection so we can adjust everything together. So what we're gonna do now is adjust the contrast. Again, we wanna go for like that vintage faded look to this image. So we're gonna pull up on this bottom black point all the way up till it reaches this middle, uh, not the middle, but the bottom one quarter bar right here. Next, we're gonna pull down on the blacks. So we're gonna add a point and pull it down to the blacks to kind of match where that point is right there. And what this does, is it crushes all the shadow detail. So basically our shadow detail just becomes like this kind of sludgy gray look. And because we've added blues to the shadows, it picks up that blue tint. So it has kind of a really nice faded look. Next, we're gonna add a midpoint right here and pull up the overall brightness of the image. Then we're gonna add a highlight point and pull down our whites so we can kill some of that contrast. All right guys, so now we have this kind of cool faded vintage look to the image. And now we just gotta finish it by adding in some detail uh, or some effects basically. So let's go down to our effects panel. We're gonna go hit control seven, and then we're gonna load up on the grain to about plus 60, maybe plus 80, somewhere around this range. 
I'm going to add a little bit to my size. And let's zoom in and check it out. The larger our size is, the more of the detail we're going to kill. The smaller the size, the finer the grain and the more detail we preserve. So we wanted to kind of have a realistic feel to it. And right about here, it looks pretty good. Let's see if we want to go any higher. I like it about 70 amount, about 35 for the size. And let's see if we want it to be a little bit more rough. I'd like it about plus 60 for the roughness. This is again, really stylistic. So you guys pick what works for you. I'm going to kind of show you guys what works for me and kind of where I like it. Next, we're going to go into lens corrections by hitting control six or command six on a Mac. And again, vin uh, uh, vintage photos are often vignetted. They came from older cameras that had vignetted edges. And so we're going to replicate that by just pulling in a lens correction vignette. Again, I don't like using the standard, uh, you know, post crop vignetting because it's a little bit too strong. So I'm just going to pull in this midpoint about negative 49 and 11 for the midpoint looks good to me. And now let's go back up to the basic. We're going to subtract out a little bit of the vibrance just so we see a little bit more of that underlying kind of cross process look. At this point, if you guys want to, um, oh, and what I'm going to do also is just add a little bit of saturation to it. So it's kind of amplifying the cross processing. So remember in the previous story, when we talked about how you could pull down the vibrance and add to the saturation to kind of create that reverse uh, coloring type look to it. So that's what we're doing here. We'll go back to our tone curve panel. We'll adjust it just a tiny bit to see if we want any additional colors. What I would like is a little bit more greens in my highlights. So I'm going to pull up the greens just a little bit, just so my sky goes to like that nice kind of faded vintage green. Um, I'd also like, let's see, a little bit more blues in the shadows and kind of the deeper shadows. So I'm going to pull it down just a tiny bit and just bring it about there. And that looks great for me, guys. I'm going to add a new snapshot to this. So this is 03 vintage color cross processed. And again, here is the before version of the image and here is the full after version of this vintage toned image. So great job guys. We have finished our tutorial on vintage color cross processing. We'll see you guys in the next tutorial.